Hello everyone. In this short video, I'm going to talk to you about zero coupon bonds. You know, what are they and how you can figure out the price or the yield to maturity of a zero coupon bond. So by now you know that bonds are a way through which corporations and even governments borrow money. Now, a typical bond will make some sort of coupon payment. So let's suppose C1 being the coupon payment at time period one, then C2. And when the bond matures, it makes the last coupon payment and then gives the face value of the bond, which for most US bonds is $1,000. And the way lenders make their rate of return, or what we call the yield to maturity, is by paying a certain price for these cash flows. In a zero coupon bond, as the name suggests, there are zero coupon payments, which means that the only thing that the borrower returns to the lender when the bond matures is the face value of the bond, which is typically $1,000. And so if you are someone who is lending money to a government or an organization, and the only thing that you're gonna get at some point in the future is $1,000, then the price that you're typically willing to pay up front is something less than $1,000, which means that zero coupon bonds typically trade at a discount, at a discount, which is why zero coupon bonds are sometimes also known as deep discount bonds because they trade at a deep discount. Sometimes they're also referred to as original issue discount bonds or OIDs, although this name is reserved not just for zero coupon bonds, but in general, those bonds that pay very small or nearly zero coupons. One example of a zero coupon bond is what is called the treasury bill. This is essentially a bond that is issued by the US government and it has a time to maturity of one year or less. And in the 1980s, actually, a lot of corporations used to issue zero coupon bonds as well. They would typically use that borrowed money or debt to finance the acquisition of other companies in what are called leveraged buyouts, which is a whole different topic. We don't need to talk about that right now. The main reason why zero coupon bonds appeal to borrowers is that they don't have to make any interest payments or coupon payments immediately. All they have to do is make this one big lump sum payment at the end when the bond matures. And so it relieves them from the pressure of thinking about making coupon payments every year or every six months. In fact, in early 2021, the government of Ghana was actually considering issuing four year zero coupon bonds for the exact same reason. What I want to talk to you about now is how you can figure out the price of a zero coupon bond if you are told what the investor's required rate of return or yield to maturity is, and then how, if you know the price of a zero coupon bond, how you can figure out the underlying yield to maturity. And I'm going to show you this using two examples, both in Excel. So consider the following example. Suppose that there is a 15 year zero coupon bond with a face value or par value of $1,000. And suppose I tell you that the yield to maturity on this bond is 12%. If I ask you what is the price of this bond, you have your coupon rate set in this case at 0% because there are no coupon payments. The face value of the bond is $1,000. The time to maturity is 15. Now the important part here is that we assume that a zero coupon bond will pay coupons twice per year. I know, you're thinking, wait, there are no coupons. Yes, you are right. However, because most corporate bonds in the US do make coupon payments, and they do so on a semi-annual basis, so in order to be consistent so that we can compare yields across zero coupon bonds and coupon paying bonds, we assume that a zero coupon bond will make coupon payments twice per year. The reason why that is important is that the periodic yield or the semi-annual yield is going to be 6% and therefore the compounding of that is going to happen over 36 month periods. 
And so that is exactly what I'm doing over here. I'm figuring out the number of time periods, which is basically 15 times two, which is the time to maturity times two. And the periodic yield or the semi-annual yield is exactly the yield to maturity divided by two. And so once you have that down, then do, then to figure out the bond price is a rather simple exercise. This is something that I've talked about in a separate video as well, where you can simply use the present value function, which requires as input the rate, which in this case is your periodic yield of 6%, the number of time periods, which is 30. There are no payments here for a zero coupon bond Payment is essentially zero. And the only thing that lenders get is the face value of $1,000 in the future. And so now when you do this calculation, you get 174.11. As you can see, the price of the bond is substantially lower than the face value of the bond, which is why we call it a deep discount bond. Let's do one more example. In this case, we're gonna figure out the yield to maturity of a zero coupon bond when the price is given. So suppose there's a company called Eight Inch Nails and it issues a $1,000 face value, five year zero coupon bond, and the price is set at $508.35. The question is, what is the yield to maturity on this bond? And so you're given the price, you're given the face value, you know that this bond doesn't make any coupon payments. So the coupon rate is zero. The face value is $1,000. The time to maturity is five. Again, we're gonna assume that there are two coupons per year. In other words, we're assuming semi-annual coupon payments and the price is 508.35. And so because we're assuming semi-annual coupon payments, that means that for a five-year zero coupon bond, the number of time periods is 10 because it's five times two. And so given all this information, calculating yield to maturity is a somewhat simple task. There are two different ways in which you can calculate the yield to maturity. One is using the rate function in Excel. So if you do equal to rate, it asks as input the number of time periods, which is 10. There are no payments, payments are zero. Present value of the bond is essentially its price and the future value is the face value, which is what you're gonna get in five years from investing in this bond. The only thing that you have to be very, very careful of is that when you will just solve this part of the equation, what you will get is the semi-annual rate or the semi-annual yield. And so in order to get the yield to maturity, which is typically expressed on an annual basis, you will have to multiply this answer by two. And so when you do that, you get a yield to maturity of 14%. Another way to do this is using the IRR function. If you do the IRR calculation, what you need to do is specifically lay out the cash flows across the timeline in this way, the way I've done it. So for a zero coupon bond, you're paying an upfront price of 508.35. This is a cash outflow. You are not going to make any money through coupon payments and in the end, you're gonna get the face value. If somebody says, what is the internal rate of return that you're gonna get from this investment? You can simply use the IRR function to do that. Again, be wary that if you do just this calculation equal to IRR, this will give you the semi-annual IRR or the semi-annual yield. And again, you will need to multiply this by two, which is in cell B4. And so again, when you do this, you get an IRR or the yield to maturity of 14%. And so this then is a quick video on zero coupon bonds and how you can figure out their prices and yield to maturity.